cases provided place about one that of solid E in a dry test tube heat the solid strongly and test any gas which both brew with both blue and red litmus paper test any gas with both blue and red litmus paper so the observation is there uh, when you heat a solid you expect uh, the following observation so this was the observation made a uh, colorless colorless liquid condenses on the cooler baths condenses on the cooler parts of the test tube so if a, li a colorless liquid condenses on the cooler parts of the test tube it confirms that there is an hydrated hydrated salt and there is a salt which contain water of crystallization so you can also say uh, water of crystallization that salt contains water of crystallization uh, what happened to the red and the blue litmus paper red litmus changes to blue changes to blue blue uh, and then blue litmus remain remains blue so if red litmus paper changes to blue and then blue litmus paper remains blue that confirms that the, as the gas that was produced is a basic gas so there you write that uh, ammonium ion is present remember ammonia is the only gas that is basic so we use ammonium ion present to imply that the gas that was produced is a base mm, place the remaining amount of solid e in a pouring test tube add about 15 centimeters cube of distilled water and shake divide the mixture into four test tubes uh, divide the mixture into four test tubes each containing about two centimeters cube of the solution now to the first portion add three drops add three or four drops of dilute hydrochloric acid dilute hydrochloric acid always when you are adding a dilute hydrochloric acid you expect a white precipitate of lead chloride if there is lead inside it will form a white precipitate if there is a silver it will form silver chloride which is a white precipitate but those are the things we expect uh, uh, also when we are adding an acid into a salt we don't know because it is an acid we expect a river sense that's another thing we expect when you add a salt uh, an acid into a salt if it is a carbonate for example it will produce a river sense so you will you would also expect it an uh, river sense so the observation is that number one, there is no evaporescence. No evaporescence. If there is no evaporescence, then it means if the inside there there was no carbonate, there was no sulfite, there was no hydrogen carbonate. absent this was absent another observation is that there is no white ppt no white no white ppt formed if there is no white ppt formed then it means that inside there there were no lead we expect a white precipitate with lead lead chloride or silver silver is positive one 
silver were absent. These two ions were absent because they form a white precipitate with a chloride ion. So they were absent. To the second portion, to the second portion, add two or three drops of aqueous barium. So barium nitrate. And then the observation is that um, barium nitrate, a white precipitate is formed. White precipitate formed. White PPT formed. So a white precipitate has been formed. Barium sulfate, we expect the following. We expect the carbonate, the sulfite, and then the sulfate. But since from our previous now, Roman 1, we have said that there is no carbonate. There is no sulfide. Therefore, what is it there? It is the sulfate which is there. Don't just say that this one, this one present yet. In our previous uh, inference here, we have said that this sulfide, carbonate, and are not there, absent because of this uh, no effervescence. And now, when you go to the next one, you will contradict yourself if you say that the carbonate and the sulfide is present. Therefore, the only uh, an ion you are going to write is that the sulfate is, uh, is present. It is the sulfate which is present. To the third portion, add aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise until in excess. So here, a white PPT is formed, white PPT formed, uh, which dissolve, which dissolve in excess, which dissolve in excess, sodium hydroxide. A white precipitate is formed, which dissolve in excess. So there, we expect the ZAP ions. The zinc, aluminium, and the lead. So we are supposed to write all of them. Aluminium, zinc, and lead. But in our previous inference, in number in our Roman 1, we have said here that lead is absent. So if you put it here, that it is present, then you contradict yourself and you are likely to lose a mark. Therefore, we leave lead out and then we infer that aluminium, 3 positive, and zinc, 2 positive, is present. We leave it out intentionally because we, in our previous, and um, we have, we have, said that it is not there. Thank you. Now man four. To the fourth portion, add aqueous ammonia dropwise until in excess. Aqueous ammonia simply means sodium uh, ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium hydroxide. Then a white precipitate white PPT which does not dissolve in excess, that is insoluble in excess, in excess ammonia solution, ammonia solution. A white precipitate is formed which does not dissolve in excess ammonia solution. Now that confirms that aluminium is present. Or another thing that this one is telling us, it is telling us that the zinc two ions is absent. Remember, if the zinc two ions were absent, the white precipitate formed will dissolve to form a colorless solution, which is going to form the complex of the zinc. Uh, it's called zinc uh, tetrahamine zinc two ions. Tetrahamine zinc two ions, the complex salt. 
Uh, let us go to the helper number three. You are provided with solid F. Carry out the following tests and record the observations and inferences in the spaces provided. Place about one third of the solid F on a clean metallic spatula and pan it in a Bunsen burner. So when it was burned, what happened? So solid the solid E. Solid F, sorry, solid F burns, burns with the, solid F burns with a yellow, solid F burns with a yellow, burns with a yellow, sooty flame. The solid F burns with a yellow soot flame. A soot means smoky, the one that produces a lot of smoke. So what is the influence? This means that uh, the, unsaturated, the unsaturated organic compound is there. So you can use the word that unsaturated, unsaturated organic compound present. The unsaturated we know we have two of them that is the, the triple the trip bond and the double bond so you can also tell kin and the alkyne therefore you can say if you can't remember this one unsaturated organic compound just write the functional groups of the alkene alkene and the alkyne so you write this one if you forget this write the double bond and make sure each carbon is surrounded with four covalent bonds or the triple bond. Make sure each carbon is surrounded with four covalent bond. And then you say present. Yes, present. Place. Place the remaining amount of solid F in a pouring tube. Add about... 10 centimeters of distilled water and shake. Use the mixture for test one, Roman 1 to Roman 3. So solid F dissolve dissolves forming forming a colorless a colorless solution. So the F dissolves forming a colorless solution. That means that the so the whatever solid the solid is is a porous organic compound. Pora organic compound. A porous organic compound is a compound which dissolves in water. The one which does not dissolve is called nonpolar. Nonpolar. Using about 2 cm cube of a mixture in a test tube, determine the pH using universal indicator, paper, and a chart. So here you give the, you add the, uh, around about 2 cm of the solution in and then mix it with an indica universal indicator, 2 cm equal amount. And then check the color against the pH chart. If the color is red, then the pH is 1. If the color is green, uh, yellow, yellow means a pH of 6, which is a very weak acid. Green pH uh, of 7, which is a neutral, something like that. For this one, the pH was 2. So if the pH is 2, it simply means that the, the solid was an acid. So strongly, acidic strongly acidic to about two centimeters of the mixture in a test tube add two or three drops of acidified potassium manganate manganate here so the purple 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 potassium or acidified potassium per manganate 
permanganate purple acidified potassium permanganate that is in here uh, is decolorized manganate 7 is or changes changes to colorless purple acidified potassium permanganate 7 changes to colorless it is simply tells us that there is a double bond and it's saturated there is a, a triple bond there is also an alcohol but since in our, we have said that the what was inside was an as a, a, an such remember alcohols are saturated r o h these are saturated organic compound because they burn with a blue nani sooty so if we put a r o h here we contradict ourselves therefore we cannot put it here because already we said what is present is an unsaturated organic compound so if we put r here present we contradict ourselves although the the acidified potassium permanganate you is used or is it carried by roh alcohols but in this case you are not going to put it here why in our previous inference we have said that what was present is an saturated organic compound alkenes and alk alkynes therefore we cannot put it there so we say this one present about this mixture add two or three drops of bromine water and bromine water is decolorized de and that also says that the triple bond or the double bond is present Ah, thank you subscribe you can call we have our contact there if you have any question you can ask we don't uh, we are always free thank you and be blessed